It was a busy legislative session with bills we know and reported on passed from everything, the power crisis yes, we, all the way to we, permitless we carry. Right. But it didn't end without controversy. Let's bring in now our political reporter, Jack Fink, standing by for us in our CBSN DFW studios. Jack? Well, Doug, there's a potential for a couple of special sessions at the Texas Capitol, and the only person who can call them is Governor Greg Abbott, who is joining us now. And Governor, as we know, lawmakers will have to return for redistricting and spending federal COVID relief money. You've also mentioned election integrity and bail reform. What other issues are you looking for and when? So, Jack, those are issues that we are working on to decide as we speak right now. Uh, and we will be announcing them uh, here in the coming weeks. Uh, we need to finish out uh, the next few weeks first. Uh, so even though the session is over, I'm still going through the process of having to read through literally more than a 1,000 bills and decide whether or not to sign or veto those bills. And it will be after that when decisions are made about uh, when we will have upcoming sessions as well as what the agenda will be for those sessions. Will you follow through on your threat on Twitter to veto a part of the budget that pertains to the legislature, at which you know affects not only lawmakers' salaries, but those of their staffs and other employees in the legislature? And can you actually even do that? So as you know, uh, the Constitution says that the governor does have uh, the power to veto uh, any item that is presented to the governor uh, as past legislation, in, including potentially the entire budget, uh, which may have been done in the past. Uh, but this, again, will be a decision uh, that I'll be making when the budget is received by me. I still don't have the budget yet. And at that time, I'll be making decisions about uh, what to do about the budget as well as what to do about upcoming sessions. Regarding the elections integrity bill, what do you say to those who were concerned about a new provision in the final bill that would have allowed early voting on Sundays only at 1 o'clock? Some African Americans said this targeted them and their efforts for souls to the polls. And how do you keep poll watchers from actually interfering or intimidating voters and workers? Sure. I'll answer your question directly, but let me put it in this context, uh, and that is it's important for Texans and Americans to know uh, that what this uh, Senate bill, Senate Bill 7, this election integrity bill did, it actually increased the number of hours that were required for polls to be open uh, in comparison to current law. So it, doesn't, it did not reduce hours, it increased hours. That said, you do raise an issue about voting on Sunday. You may have heard about the controversy that occurred a couple of days ago when Representative Travis Clardy said that it was a mistake, a clerical mistake, uh, to show 1 o'clock as opposed to 11 o'clock. Those are facts that I do not know. That's just the context for your audience. I agree uh, that on that Sunday, uh, there should be plenty of time for people to be able to vote, including having earlier hours, so that it's clear uh, but also factual uh, that there is no discriminatory intent whatsoever. I believe throughout the entirety of this legislation, there is absolutely no discriminatory intent, period. And one way to ensure that uh, is to ensure plenty of time to be able to vote on that one Sunday during early voting. And then quickly, Governor, following up as far as the poll watchers, how would you guarantee that they don't intimidate voters and then workers as well? So that's, that's the responsibility of several different people. One would be uh, those in charge of uh, operating the poll at that location, as well as other local officials. And, and whenever there's a violation, it can be reported to law enforcement. So there, there are plenty of guardrails to ensure that everybody does act appropriately. Wanted to ask you about the power outage bills. Um, do you think that enough was done during the session to guarantee that the state of Texas will never experience those deadly power outages that we saw? And also, some have called for uh, some kind of credit for uh, ratepayers, homeowners, on fut against future increases. Will you be adding that specifically to a to a special session? Sure. Jack, let me address both issues that you raised. First, it's so important because I, I know that people uh, went through very challenging times uh, during the month of February, and we wanted to ensure that would never happen again. And when you look at all the multiple pieces of legislation that have reached my desk, uh, the power system and power grid in the state of Texas has never been better. Let me just tick these off real quick. Number one, there is 
enhance much greater accountability in ERCOT, the, the power grid system, as well as in the Public Utility Commission. There is weatherization to ensure whether it be in wintertime or summertime, there are safeguards in place making sure that all of the entities involved in the entire power generation process will be weatherized sufficiently so that they will not shut down. There's also what's called critical infrastructure protection. What that means is, as you may recall during the winter storm, there was a blackout imposed by ERCOT, but it left the lights on in downtown Dallas, it left the lights on in hospitals, but it shut down everything else. They should have exempted power generating facilities from being shut down, but it did not exempt those. And that is one of the things that led to the prolonged outage because power generating facilities themselves got frozen. And we need to make sure, or not need to make sure, we did make sure uh, that will never happen again. Also, very importantly, Jack, as we're talking right now, Texas has more power generating capacity than we've ever had before, including before and at the time of the winter storm. Two last things, and that is there are now enforcement mechanisms with potential million dollar fines uh, for people or entities that do not comply with the weatherization requirements, as well as legislation to ensure that customers in the future will not be subject to any, any type of price spikes like what some people saw during this winter storm. And I'll use that to transition into your other question, uh, and that is, do I think that we should uh, seek legislation assisting consumers. I'm always in favor of that. If there's legislation that, that we can pass that would assist consumers, I'm all in favor of it. All right, Governor Greg Abbott, we will have to leave it there. Appreciate all of your time today, sir. Thank you very much.